The United States is in some turmoil and difficulty and, tr and trouble as far as issues of democracy and human rights are concerned and the very core issues that relate to the open society mission of CEU. So it's a book exploring what's happening in America um, and how it is that the country can hold together with its values at a time when those values are under attack and why they're under attack. So it starts from a really basic proposition, which is that the United States is a country, unlike European countries, for example, that, has, that is not built on ancestry and on connections that people have going back through generations, some of that, but it's built on immigration, it's built on the history of enslavement in the United States, and it's built on the subjugation of its indigenous people. So. What is it that could hold together a country like that? Well, the answer is, um, even though it's never in any way been perfect, what holds together a country of such diversity, and there's never been a, a country in the world that's quite as diverse as the U.S., is a combination of rights and responsibilities. And so we explore how Americans feel about those rights. And these are rights that there's been a long struggle over a long period of time to try to realize these rights. Um, the right to vote, the right to equal protection of the law, and the right above all not to be in slavery, which of course is where the, so many Americans started until the Civil War. Uh, the right to due process of law and to be treated fairly in a courtroom, and the right to basic uh, necessities of life. Anyway, so the book is, explores what those rights are about and, and how they are being uh, treated in the U.S. today. And of course, there are some uh, pretty devastating aspects of rights. They're being denied to many people. But we wanted to find out how Americans felt about their rights. What are their opinions today about these rights? And, in that, and this is really the core of the book in many respects, because we report uh, based on a lot of uh, public opinion polling and meetings uh, that have taken place around the country, what we call town hall meetings that, that we conducted. And when I say we, I mean my colleagues and I at Harvard University now. Um, and what we found was that about 75% of Americans have a very strong and positive view of these rights and how the rights should hold people together in a country of diversity. They have a, a fairly balanced view of both rights and responsibilities. About 75% of Americans actually believe that uh, they have a responsibility to protect people in a pandemic against uh, disease by wearing a mask and getting vaccinated and otherwise following public uh, health uh, requirements. About 70% of Americans actually believe that something that's very controversial and often in the news these days, that the right to own a gun, which is protected by the US Constitution, should be balanced against the right uh, to public safety and that we ought to regulate uh, guns in a much more aggressive way than is now done, which isn't largely done at all in the United States. So why then is all this polarization and turmoil going on inside of the United States? Well, the fact is that uh, at, in, at bottom we find that um, a large majority of Americans are what I call the silent majority who support the principles of rights and responsibilities, but the, the, the noisiest and most aggressive uh, Americans in this respect are involved in what I call an extremist minority. And that minority is essentially trying to hijack and take away uh, the rights of many others who they feel threatened by. And there is uh, people who feel th white Americans who feel that African Americans and other people of, vote, of color are taking away their, their uh, political uh, power. Um, that uh, women who are being given uh, opportunities uh, that didn't exist before and above all whose right to decide whether or not to bear a child, the right to abortion, uh, they feel threatened culturally by that. So, this minority has, in a sense, hijacked the whole principle of equal rights and responsibilities in America. So what can be done about all of this? Um, 
And this is not easy. There are really two paths and they need to both be followed. One is we need uh, to bring together this silent majority, as I call it, to um, become a coalition uh, of reform uh, that will take back and, and, and reestablish and reclaim uh, the rights that should apply equally to all Americans. And the second thing, in order to do that, is we need to have some structural reforms in the American political system that uh, allow uh, the majority's voice to be more effectively heard than it now is. Many people know, for example, that in the United States Senate, there's something called the filibuster, which prevents uh, uh, a majority of senators from bringing to the floor for a vote uh, a, a bill to implement voting rights, which in fact is what happened in, in the Congress in the last session. Um, we know that uh, small uh, population rural states have a disproportionate uh, power in uh, the U.S. Congress, uh, particularly in the Senate, uh, and many other structural issues that need to be addressed. So this is going to be a long time struggle but Americans should be familiar with this struggle because it's been going on for a long time anyway. As I say, we're a country that started out with slavery, with the, uh, the subjugation of indigenous people, and many of those rights have been realized. We're a, right, we're a country that until 1920 didn't even give American women the right to vote, and now they have the right to vote. Um, we're a country that was segregated uh, for long periods of time until the 1960s, uh, segregated by race, particularly in the South. And uh, the civil rights laws have come about which have uh, allowed that change. So this struggle for the realization of rights is a long historical struggle and it's continuing today and what we hope our book does is to have put together a roadmap for continuing that struggle uh, at a time when rights are particularly under, under attack.